Welcome back. This is the conclusion to an epic adventure I went on last July. I hiked a loop in the Alps over four days in a heatwave. It was my first time using a bivy bag and tarp as shelter and made for some fantastic wild camping. You're joining me about halfway near the Refuge des Settlers. We didn't have a thunderstorm, we just had some rain last night. Um, it did sort of thunder over the mountains, but it didn't come here. And um, the wind completely changed direction overnight, so the way that I'd set up my tent didn't really... In the end, I started getting lots of wind and stuff in my face. <laughs> but um, I think by then the rain had mostly stopped, so that was good. I'm, yeah, feeling rough this morning. Um, that hike yesterday was quite hard and I'm not sleeping super well. <coughs> and I'm coughing. I think the, uh, the hiking and stuff is getting into my lungs and working them more than they would like to be worked. <laughs> anyway. I've put you in the windshield <laughs> so that hopefully there isn't too much wind noise. But yeah, it is stunning here. I'm very, very glad to be here. Oh, and the sun is just coming out from the top of the mountain. So that should help dry my stuff a little bit more. very slow start today I'm very tired and I can feel that my body's not gonna cope with the 16k that I had planned today to join the uh, refuge du Cré du Poulet which is very sad because I really really wanted to go to that refuge but I just feel incapable of covering that distance so instead 
I'm gonna keep following the um, Tour des Sept Lots, which is another sort of main path, and um, won't be going into the valley or anything. But I'll be cutting. I'll be while camping somewhere um, up on the um, the top. <laughs> you'll see. But you'll see what I mean. But yeah. So a bit sad that I'm not gonna do it. But um, I've got to do what I've got to do. Like I've got to respect my body as well. Everyone I've spoken to was like, "That's ambitious." <laughs> when I told them my plan, so um, not that I've let that necessarily influence my decision, but I think it's probably reinforced the thought that yeah, it's probably too much. So yeah, I'm gonna take my time with the way down now, and then it's sort of gonna wind around the mountain and go sort of slowly back up. So yeah. <sighs> Onwards. First shaded spot in ages. I am dying. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not able to go down into the valley. The next thing I need to consider is water. I have about one and a half liters in my bag, but I'm gonna need to figure something out. Um, but I think the hardest is done now. In terms of downward. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> I didn't film a lot on the way down because it was quite dangerous. And uh, yeah, my, sh my shoes are getting more and more knackered. <laughs> Let's hope I don't dam like break them. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> I came from there, up there. So if I wanted to go into the valley, I would be going left, but I'm going to go right. These kinds of <clears throat> mountain paths really uh, require, require all of my concentration. It is uh, quite important to be, you've got to be at least 90% present <laughs> um, in order to not, you know, take a misstep or something. So it's uh, quite tiring and draining, but kind of nice it's kind of meditative after a while like 
you know, you just kind of feel a bit like, okay, one foot in front of the other. And then you stop and you kind of look around and, I mean, yeah. So it's totally, totally worth it. <laughs> Believe me, I look less, less enthused than I feel. <laughs> For lunch, I'm having some bread, of course. We are in France after all. And I'm having some veggie spread thing and some really, 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 really sweaty used cheese. So I forced myself to have lunch. <laughs> and um, that was a little while back and I'm back on the trail and uh, just crossing under a ski thingy line words <laughs> and um yeah it's beautiful the view's really opened up now and it's like pfft, absolutely amazing i just want to take a moment to <clears throat> say how weird it is to see like a ski resort <laughs> in this in summer it must look so different in winter um but yeah and you've got the different um ski skiing levels you know um tracks and stuff like that green track red track um <sighs> yeah i haven't i haven't skied since i was like 13 but kind of makes me want to ski again because these views are <laughs> just like absolutely stunning is a boring section <laughs> although the views are not boring but it's a boring section of it's basically road or rocky dirt track very wide but hey on the one hand much less technical so I can sort of switch my brain off but also my feet are like really feeling that <laughs> And they are screaming! <laughs> and it was closed um, I have a feeling so chalets closed in the summer refuges are open there are no refuges on this side of the mountains at all um, not on the road I'm on the route I'm going anyway this is all ski resorts and yeah <laughs> obviously I'm I'm still a, a while away from the sort of nearest actual like town and ski resort um, and I feel like there's a storm brewing um, there was a little bit of thunder earlier and 
it's a lot of wind. I mean, I expect the wind on this side, but I don't really know what to do. <laughs> I'm a little bit uncertain and, and honestly kind of scared. I don't know, like, sure, of course, with the bivy bag, I could just go anywhere. But now, now I understand why everyone I've spoken to so far, so far that's come this way and headed where I've come from has said that they've done basically this whole section plus then going up to the Setlo in one go, which is like 21k or something, which <laughs> I don't know if my legs are up for, to be honest. Like I could probably do it, but then what? Like, what am I gonna do in Papatel, just hanging around one night without a bus to go down? Um, it is nice and I can see like really far and everything is great, but I'm leaving the bell done now, really. I, I'm uh, putting it behind me, can't see it anymore. So yeah, I don't know, feeling a bit meh, a bit meh. If I, if I could at least find some forest again, some trees, so that I'm protected, that would be good. Cause like yesterday at the refuge, when it was a bit stormy, like you're near the refuge. So you know that there's somewhere you can go if it gets bad. Um, but in this case, there isn't really anywhere. So yeah, I might just do that. But it's a pity though, because, uh, because I've done all this now done this like shorter route and I'm not potentially not even gonna do four days I don't know I'm a bit annoyed <laughs> but obviously like you can't really predict these things so it is what it is look I can even see where I'm going there that's Paputel I really want I really don't want to go there yet. <laughs> I wanna <to> stay. <laughs> the prospect of a storm and wild camping in such an exposed area worried me, and nowhere near was both sheltered by trees and flat enough to pitch up camp. I would have loved to camp further up in view of the bigger mountains, but it seemed too risky at the time. My feet were knackered and so was I. So I'm about four or five kilometers away from Paputel, which is my end point. Um, I found a place to camp, but I <laughs> walked around for a very long time um, in this really short space of you know, geographical space if you will <sighs> trying to find a place and um, I'm really done um, I've been drinking some water with the rehydration tablet and now I only have two liters left so the plan is to I am gonna have dinner because I do need to feed myself but I'm gonna um, tomorrow morning I'll just have coffee and then hopefully, I think it's just downhill now to Papatel so it won't take long. But um, it's a clear sign that I'm tired because it took me ages to find a place to camp because I just was scared of the potential <laughs> of, the, of thunder and, and, and lightning and stuff like that and I even though it's like, it's like rained like three drops and you know, that's it. And, but yeah, I am so done. I'm really warm. I've definitely had too much sun today. Um, I feel really dirty. Like I just, I really want to wash, but I need to save my water. So, but I'm a little bit feeling a little bit of regret really. Um, with the distance I walked today, I could have gone all the way to the other place that I was originally planning to go. Yeah, it might have been a different hike, you know, well, definitely would have been a different hike. It has to be said that if I'd gone the other way, I would have needed to complete over 1,100 metres of descent, 
and then over 700 meters of ascent. Whereas this way, I saved myself about two thirds of that. So definitely a good decision, at least for my body. But like, I didn't take breaks as much and stuff today. And um, the terrain just didn't really allow for comfortable breaks, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah. I just feel really gross. <laughs> Sorry, my lips are all like chapped and disgusting. Anyway, this is the reality. <laughs> and it's too hot to like go into bed, really. I really want the sun to set so that I can go to bed. <laughs> very grateful for the tarp though. Because um, it's very, very quick setup and also it's very handy if it does rain. And it means my stuff um, can just be protected and gives me a little bit more privacy and stuff in case people pass by. So yeah. Anyway, catch you later. Bye. <laughs> Dinner is fire pot chili non carne with rice. With rice. I haven't tried that one yet. A little bit of a whiskey hot chocolate and some really really crushed blue biscuits, <laughs> chocolate biscuits. I just started bleeding. From this bit on my foot. I have no idea why. Maybe I've just been stung by a mosquito. with a friend and I'm looking over looking over at the Chartreuse which is now covered in cloud but it's like the cloud is just like laying itself on top of the Chartreuse it's really funny um, I don't know what that phenomenon is called in terms of specific type of cloud that just goes <laughs> anyway I feel a little bit better now that I've had food and then I'm settled and I also feel better now that night's actually falling um because it just means less people around and stuff um i'm just gonna have a drop of that not great because i'm still a little bit dehydrated but i just want the treat <laughs> and um might write for a bit or just chill nice way to end the day even if i feel still gross and kind of sticky and you know but it's nonetheless still a great way to end the day and a great sort of last night on the french trail so yeah i think i'm gonna sign off for the night i'll see you in the morning <laughs> bye morning um <clears throat> i slept okay mostly very very quiet and um <sighs> my feet feel like they're twice their size they're not and they're fine but they just feel quite rough so i'm actually quite glad that i'm not going much further today <clears throat> i think um doing some of the technical hiking that I did with the barefoot shoes um, it has its drawbacks for sure but I do like feeling what's under my feet um, I think what really did the feet in was actually the sort of slog yesterday the second half of the day which was just like yeah flat but like 
either asphalt or like gravel. Ugh, sorry. Um, I moved the, I moved away one of the fly, one of the sheets from the tarp so that I can just sort of sit under here and have space here um, and watch as the sunrise lights up the mountain ridge opposite whilst I make coffee. So yeah, I do like that flexibility with the tarp. Um, you can just sort of change things around and you're not bound to like your tent door. Um, I do enjoy that. This is great for summer camping and um, <clears throat> it does gather condensation though really badly. But that might have also been because the wind just died down overnight. So I didn't get any um, anything to shake it. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> So for breakfast, I'm having the last of the bread and the vegetable pate and the stinky cheese and uh, an apple. And I'm not having not having the porridge because it's better to use up my leftovers and it also makes for less washing up. In the river, or we could be fire on the stone if we couple of hikers just passed me as well. I really need to get going, so yeah, let's get dressed and get a move on. <laughs> Come on, we're motivated. <laughs> Grenoble from here. Thank you. 
they've turned the telecabins on for some reason. Um, maybe they're testing them out or something. But um, yeah, I'm pretty much in Papatel now. So uh, I'm gonna sign off. I've um, got quite a bit to sort of reflect on and think about. Uh, the trip was, was really great overall. Um, my original plan was too ambitious, I see that now. Um, but you know, that's, that's how it goes with mountains often, um, I find. <laughs> Especially with the thing that's over several days where you're carrying all your kit and stuff. Um, but yeah, I um, definitely, definitely enjoyed this one. I definitely don't want to leave the mountains at all. I'm very sad to leave. <laughs> um, but I also really, really want a shower. So, you know, priorities. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go sit somewhere, have a beer, possibly some lunch. Oh, it's stopping now. <laughs> and um, yeah, the new gear, the tarp and the bivy bag have been great. And the new water system as well that I've been using, testing out the Catadyne um, filter and a couple of other bits. It's, it's all worked really great and I'm quite happy with my choices. Um, yeah, and in terms of the terrain, I'm just glad I made it, honestly, because um, there were moments there where I was like, uh, <laughs> it was it was risky stuff. But yeah, anyway, really enjoyed it. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for watching. Um, tell everyone that you know. <laughs> no, but you know the spiel. Um, tell your friends, grandparents and pets. Uh, comment, like, share, subscribe to the channel and uh, or don't <laughs> live your life <laughs> not your mum <laughs> but anyway um yeah can leave it at that thank you again bye <laughs>